confident Pittsburgh Steelers began 1976 as undisputed world champions. 43 proud players, 10 proven coaches, all seeking an unprecedented third consecutive Super Bowl victory. But this would be a year to test that championship spirit. Unexpected adversity would bring out talents which had lain dormant during prosperity. And in the end, this team would respond with greatness. While 1976 did not bring another trophy, it was the measure of a champion. The season began in Oakland, California against the arch-rival Raiders. A meticulous game plan was prepared, but the Steelers are always willing to improvise. Franco Harris and John Stallworth created a touchdown as Pittsburgh ran up a two-touchdown lead with less than six minutes left to play. Pittsburgh miracles had frustrated Oakland in the past. Now the Raiders counted with a magician of their own, quarterback Ken Stabler. Stabler pulled 17 points out of a hat in the last five minutes, and Pittsburgh watched in disbelief as a game seemingly won, slipped away. The nightmares of opening day lingered through September and into October. During those five fateful weeks, sure things like Terry Bradshaw to Lynn Swan came up empty. The curtain lost its steel and gave up 110 points. After two years as top dog, Pittsburgh was paid back with some of its own. The winds of change were blowing. Young challengers came to Pittsburgh eager to make their mark. The team that beats a champion can leave with pride. Those who start the season with one win and four losses just slip quietly away. They're just having some big problems, that's all. Once they get over, they'll be all right. They still got a shot at the league, the championship, and they'll do it. Very lousy this year. They don't, they don't have no, like, no get up and go power. I don't know what's wrong with them. I don't think there's nothing wrong with them. I think they're going to win big this week. They're cocky. They think they're on top. They think they have a guaranteed berth in the Super Bowl. They're not in no trouble. They'll pull out of it tomorrow. They're in trouble. They ain't going to take no Super Bowl, not even the playoffs. While fans debate it, the Steelers found glowing embers in the ashes of defeat. They pulled together and established a new goal. The playoffs were nine games away. Pittsburgh vowed to win them all, starting with the division leading Cincinnati Bengals. True believers stood to be counted, even with rookie Mike Krusek filling in for injured Terry Bradshaw. Yeah, I told Mike yesterday, and uh, uh, Mike Krusek, the guy that's going to be playing, and 
I said, it's not your fault we're one and four, it's my fault. You just go out there and play your game. There's no pressure on you. Be relaxed. Do the things that you, you know, that God's given you the ability to do. The guy's really a good quarterback, and I think he's going to be a great one. He's not a practice player. He's one of these game-type players, and he does well under pressure. And I think he'll come in and give it some new young blood, and the guys are going to realize he's young, and they're going to give a little extra. And I think that little bit of extra is going to be just what we need to get us off. And I look for us to upset the Bengals because I think our team will be fired up. Win with Mike today win with him next week you know maybe I won't even have to come back you know just I want us to win I don't care who's in there and I believe two or three wins under our belt I think we'll go undefeated the rest of the year and get back in the playoffs and that's where we really play our best football Mike Kruzek started his first pro game and he was soon on the run with Cincinnati in pursuit but the rookie was not alone Defense came to the rescue as the real steel curtain dropped into place, the one that could smother any offense. Defense did not allow a touchdown, and Kruzek played it safe, handing off to big number 32. Mike Kruzek did whatever it took to win, and by game's end, the Steelers had stopped on rushing oblivion with a 23-6 victory. Turnaround 76 had begun. The most dramatic comeback in NFL history lay ahead. For six years, Terry Bradshaw had given the Steeler offense an intriguing appeal. No one knew for sure what would happen next. Not even the Pittsburgh players. Bradshaw to Lewis to Bradshaw to Grossman was exciting. But now, with the blonde bomber recuperating, the attack shifted gears. Kruzek kept the ball on the ground as Pittsburgh threw the fewest passes in team history. Still, when play action was called, number 15 could nail Larry Brown from 30 paces. Kruzak was also mobile enough to keep a defense honest with sprint outs and scrambles. Those who predicted doom with Bradshaw out didn't count on a gutsy rookie completing 60% of his passes to receivers like Frank Lewis, T. Bell, and Ernest Pugh. Kruzik came through, but he wasn't the real reason that Pittsburgh was unstoppable again. The offensive line had shouldered a burden. They were bringing Pittsburgh back infantry style. No fancy stuff or pretty faces here. Just the basics by Clack, Cole, Mullins, Davis, Mansfield, and Webster. The ground crew. Their job was to clear a path to the playoffs. The Steeler offense was back on track because each man had a part to play. Pittsburgh rushed for the third highest total yardage in NFL history by following a plan. Center takes nose man. Double team on tackle. Pulling guard kicks end out. Tight end picks off linebacker. Back runs to daylight. A 
A 10-yard gain can be a thing of beauty. And when 10-yard gains pile up, backs follow blockers to victory. This was Rocky Blyer's kind of game, because Blyer's fire is quickness. To the ball and through the hole in a flicker. Once in the secondary, Blyer bleeds yardage. Leaping, diving, sliding for every available inch. Number 20 bled out a thousand yards in 76, joining a four-time member of that exclusive club. But if Blyer is Steeler Fire, then Franco Harris must be Cold Steel. Harris is the man defenses fear. He can beat you in so many ways. Franco Harris scored 14 touchdowns as the infantry went rolling down comeback road. But along the way, there was the matter of a snowy evening in Cincinnati. The Bengals still led the division by one game, but in this surreal setting, neither team could find its way. This was a game that the ground crew could win. Chuck Knoll simply asked them for one touchdown. With a 7-3 triumph over the Bengals, Pittsburgh stayed in the race and laughed in nature's face. Resurrection from 1-4 requires everyone's help. Bobby Walden punted and also held for Roy Girella as special teams joined the cause. While Jarella's contributions paid off in points, other special teamers were sometimes lost in the rush. Joining the chase were reserves Donnie Shell, Marv Kellum, Jim Allen, Jack Delaplane, and Benny Cunningham. Out of this black and gold swarm emerged starters of tomorrow, men like rookie offensive lineman Ray Penny, number 74. But in Pittsburgh, special teams are not just rookies and reserves. Starters like Jack Lambert also become bomb squatters. The term fits Lambert's style nicely. At times, his slender physique seems ill-suited to the pounding he gives and takes. Yet no one can hold him down. He is obsessed with his job, demanding perfection from himself and those around him. Jack Lambert leads by word and deed. He was the year's most valuable steer. But steel of defense is not one man. It is time-honored tradition. Pittsburgh fans have always revered their defense, but this was the most frightening yet. Up front, Greenwood, White, Holmes, and Green, with Banazak and Furness in reserve. 
at linebacker, Ham, Lambert, Russell, and Taves. In the secondary, Blunt, Thomas, Edwards, and Wagner. A unit without weakness and the daring to try anything. The multiple blitz, for instance. Send enough men and Mike Wagner is bound to slip through. Or fake a blitz with Wagner, then swing L.C. Greenwood in on a stunt. If that's too fancy, simply have Joe Green crowd a center, then out quick him. Pittsburgh defenders took on the rest of the league and won. They led the NFL in nine categories, 10 if you count aggressive behavior. And so it was that defense joined hands with offense for the long, hard pull into the playoffs. Could anyone stand in the way? Not the New York Giants. They fell 27-0. One week later, John Banaszak picked up a San Diego fumble and sent Pittsburgh on the way to a 23-0 whitewash. This brush with glory was called back but number 76 claimed that it will live forever in the Banazak Book of Records. Next, Kansas City gained 38 yards rushing, and Pittsburgh picked up a third straight shutout, 45 to nothing. A string of 11 straight scoreless quarters was snapped by Miami, but just barely. The Dolphins fell 14 to three, and Tampa Bay was the next shutout victim, 42 to nothing. Against Tampa, a familiar figure returned and restored a link with glory pass. Terry Bradshaw was back bombing to Lynn Swan for the first time since Super Bowl X and the Steelers gave thanks. Eight straight wins with one to go. Hello, everybody. I'm Lindsey Nelson at the Astrodome in Houston, Texas, where the Pittsburgh Steelers take on Houston this afternoon. When the Steelers had played five games this year, they had a record of one win and four losses. Many of their followers around the country, and many of them at home, figured they had no chance to get into the playoffs and take a shot at a possible third consecutive Super Bowl championship. But they have done a most amazing turnaround. I guess you'd have to say that the Steelers are a team with a lot of character, because not only did they come back after a terrible start, but they're a big game team, and they're here in a hostile setting, but as Chuck Noll points out, well, they love it that way. It just gets them all the more up. Uh, you can't get on their back and expect them to fall apart because they'll stand in there and just get very sore. Punning situation, I remind you, the defense is closing in on its fifth shutout in nine games. Ooh-wee. And to give us the blyer. Here he comes, ripping off the left side. Got a blocker, Mullins. That is some kind of meat grinder that's rolling through the NFL and heading toward the playoffs. Bradshaw drops back. He throws, and it is caught by Swan. Had him from USC, went into the air to take the football for a Steeler touchdown. And what a sensational play it was. And there's nothing but happiness down in that Steeler bench area. Just a great victory, a vital one, 
and I think a tribute to the Steeler organization. Nine consecutive victories for the Pittsburgh Steelers, and only a total of 28 points given up in that total of nine ball games. A moment to savor for Andy Russell in his 13th and final season. An achievement to be cherished by everyone who took part. Let it go! I think the, the true test of a, you know, a championship team and the whole idea of what a championship team stands for is, is to be able to do what uh, this team has done, and that's when we were one and four. And the crucial point in, in this season, not to throw it to the dogs, but to be able to pick up what we had. And I think it shows the true nature of the team when they can play with their backs to the wall for nine straight games. And talked about and being put down and said the old Steelers are fat cats, you know, uh, fat rats sitting in the cheese factory. Right, Coming back and taking the whole thing, like Ernie Holmes said, we're going to give a league a four-game a four spot and then come back and take it off. We never gave up hope, really, because after that fourth loss, we said we're not going to lose anymore. After we started winning, I knew we were going to keep on winning. We get on fire, we get confident, we get that fever, and, and we're, hard to, we're hard to play. We're hard to, I hate to have to play against us. Our running game right now is, uh, is at its peak, and uh, we get a little passing going, and uh, we're going to be hard to beat. Hard to beat. The NFL's second season opened in Baltimore with a rematch of the 1975 playoffs. Terry Bradshaw waited three plays before breaking the game open. Sixty yards downrange, Frank Lewis cradled the ball, and Pittsburgh's masterpiece had begun. Bradshaw threw two touchdowns. Harris gained 132 yards. And the ground crew made it happen. Then a hard-earned lead was entrusted to the defense. In the fourth quarter, fresh horses joined the romp as John Fuqua and Reggie Harrison rambled home. Reserves sealed the win. Even the place kicker was new. The old ranger, Ray Mansfield, scored the first point of his 14-year career and bounded off like a rookie. Pittsburgh had been in the playoffs for 10 weeks now. Just one game remained before a third straight Super Bowl. But victory extracted a stiff price. Rocky Blyer and Franco Harris were hurting. The following week in Oakland, they watched from the sidelines as Super Bowl dreams were put to rest. ended as it had begun with defeat in Oakland but in many ways the season had been the most satisfying of all in years of adversity lesser teams have crumbled but the Steelers battled their way to the very end and when the measure of a champion was taken Pittsburgh passed the test the season is done the field overrun. Yet through the swirl I see a brighter sun than prizes won. I was the best I could be. A season story of quiet glory remains when all is done. We won our way, the right to say, Steelers champions.